This segment is on Islamic financial institutions and its specific markets in Australia, namely safeguarding faith and safeguarding wealth. The concept of ownership of wealth implies that human being has relative ownership for we are only trustees or custodian. As human being, we are stewards and are accountable for our action in managing this wealth to restore socio-economic justice and promote mutual benevolence. Evidences from the Quran and Hadith. The fact that all of this wealth belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is stated under a number of verses in the Quran. There are also a number of Hadiths which caution humankind in their dealings with wealth. Imam al-Ghazali emphasized that there is more to life than just making money. Know that nobody should forget his religion and the next world, his destination during the course of his trade and commerce, and earning livelihood. If he forgets it, he will be ruined and he will be then one of those who sell their next world in lieu of this world. But the wise man is he who protects his capital. His real capital is his religion and matters relating to the next world. These are relative sub-dimensions which are universal. Protection of ownership, circulation of wealth, justice in terms of value protection, and transparency. These are relative indicators under the sub-dimension of protection of ownership to ensure that no damage or reduction in value to the depositors, whether it is intended or not intended. The investment of the owner's fund did not violate the Sharia. Liquidity management is in accordance with Sharia. And these are relative indicators under the sub-dimension of circulation of wealth. Through the profit-loss sharing mode of financing, through the profit sharing mode of financing, increase investments in the essential and vital economic sectors, effective and efficient in terms of the social distribution system. Examples are Zakat, Qad Hassan and Wak. Fair and just distribution of wealth generated. Now these are relative indicators under the sub-dimension of justice in terms of value protection. Protection of public interest, prevention of public misfortune, improvement in financial technologies. These are relative indicators under the sub-dimension of transparency to enhance the client understanding of the service provided through legal documentation, to increase the level of knowledge on customer rights through financial reports or annual reports. Now, in terms of application, the development of wealth is also imperative for realizing the crucial Islamic goal of minimizing the inequalities of income and wealth. For this purpose, it would be a mistake to place primary reliance on the redistributive methods of zakat, sadaqah, and awqaf. While all of these are indispensable, it is also important to enlarge the national pie through economic development. Now, the role of the Islamic financial institution has been positioned as a means of financial development which should be in tandem with the development of Islamic economics in creating the well-being of the Ummah. Thus, Islamic financial institutions should strive for a balance between profit and social objectives. Now, these are prospects and challenges. The Malaysian Islamic finance industry is considered systemically important alongside those of seven other countries, namely Brunei, Kuwait, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, and the United Arab Emirates and Yemen. However, despite the impressive growth of between 15% to 18% over the years and its future prospects brought about by the increasing Muslim population worldwide, the concern is on the value of this growth. A large number of Muslim countries face moral issues and are perceived to be corrupt, as revealed by the Transparency International Corruption Perception Index. This brings us to the, the issue of moral hazard behavior and asymmetric information. Now, to conclude, it is essential that success or failure of any type of mechanism as a means of financial development is very much dependent on the ethical norms of the current Muslim society. Now, the question is, what is our contribution? This brings back to the notion of accountability and our current ethical values 
do we really strive hard to carry, carry out our ethical values according to the Islamic teachings? Now, these are essential attributes to ensure that whatever means or mechanism that we Muslim embark into would be a success and is an example to be emulated by others.